Welcome to the beautiful Redwoods of California to give you a tour of our 2022 Thor Tranquility camper van. This camper van is based on the Mercedes Sprinter 2500 4x4 and let's go check it out. So I've wanted a Mercedes Sprinter van since forever, probably when I was about 18 or so. Um, obviously they're pretty expensive, it's a big investment and we finally worked hard enough to purchase one so I'm absolutely stoked. Um, Lindsay and I have just been wanting to go explore, especially with COVID and all the California wildfires. This is like our escape mobile. Um, so it's based on the Mercedes Sprinter 2500 4x4 setup. So it's fully four wheel drive. Um, you can go on any dirt gravel roads. Obviously, we're not gonna be taking it on like the Rubicon Trail in Tahoe or any super gnarly 4x4 trails, but I just wanted to be able to pretty much go wherever I wanted, Monument Valley, Moab, um, places like this where there are some pretty uh, gnarly gravel, dirt, steep hills, things like that. Um, so I'm gonna start with the back of the van and then I'll have Lindsay show you the interior. But one of the best things about this Thor Tranquility setup, um, this is the 19L. So it's the Thor Tranquility 19L. And the 19L has amazing rear storage capabilities. So we're just gonna open these double doors up here and let me take you on a little tour of the garage of the van. So my favorite thing about the garage storage are these 250 pound rated slide out drawers. They're really big. This is where I like to keep um, my camera gear. I've got two bags with camera gear in them. And then I've got like big heavy hefty video tripods, my other tripod. Um, so this right drawer is usually kind of dedicated to storing my camera gear. Um, and then if I put these back, we've got this other drawer here is where we keep things that are related to the van. Um, so uh, we've got like a leveling kit. We've got uh, a little uh, RV starter kit that comes with like the sewage hose, um, other things you need to make the functionality of the, the water system work. We keep our bug screens back here as well. Um, I got a hammock, the spray hose, which I'll show you in a little bit. Um, so that's kind of like where we keep all the stuff that we need for the actual van itself. You've also got these additional uh, storage areas, little cubbies. Uh, I'm thinking about cutting a hole in one of these so I can fit skis to go all the way through. Uh, but right now it's good for storing little things like camping chairs. Um, we also have three more cubbies over on the right side over here. Um, this bottom faux drawer is actually a pretty good size cupboard area. I mean, that goes all the way down into the bottom of the van. Um, I just put the charging cable in there. And so we'll pop these back on. Um, this one under here just has um, basically one of the tanks under there. One of the coolest things about the back of this van is the spray unit. So um, alongside the shower on the inside of the van, we have an outdoor shower or just a, a hose that you can use to uh, spray yourself off, take an outdoor shower, spray off paddle boards, um, bikes, anything you wanna clean off. Um, you've also got your uh, plugs right here as well as a um, cigarette lighter plug. Um, so sometimes like pumps and things like that, you can only have a, a car charger type plug. So that's what that's for. Um, and this spray unit is just great. So this hose here, you just plug it right in and then turn the water pump on. So you can use this spray nozzle to clean anything off. It's got plenty of power. So that's the tour of the garage area of the van. Let's go ahead and close this. So on the back, you'll see that it comes with this uh, Thule bike rack. Uh, we haven't used it yet because we have the giant um, Stance E Plus and the Live Embolden uh, e-bikes, and they're a little bit too heavy for this system. I'll probably still leave it on. Um, otherwise, I'm gonna change this out uh, for maybe some more storage capabilities. 
Uh, it does have a 5,000 pound tow hitch, uh, which you can tow, I think it's up to 3,500 pounds. Um, so usually we'll use our other uh, Thule bike rack, which is rated for our e-mountain bikes, um, which goes on that tow hitch. Um, you also have the trailer hookup for, for the trailer lights down there. And let's go ahead and cruise around to this side of the van. So one of the coolest things about this Sprinter van build out that Thor did was add these pop outs, which gives you a little bit of extra sleeping room. Um, I'm six foot one, so that helps a lot for, for my size. I can fully stretch out in the bed. Um, so that is a huge plus. Okay, so we're gonna start off with all these different uh, functionalities here, starting with this top one, which is our freshwater tank fill. So this is what you use to fill the freshwater tank with uh, a normal hose at your house. Um, it's non-pressurized. So that's uh, basically how you fill the tanks before you leave for a trip. This is where you keep your sewage hose for draining your gray water tank. This is your city fill. So this is where you actually um, hook up to a pressurized hose when you're at an RV park or something. Typically, we like to boondock it and just go places where you're not sitting next to a bunch of other campers. We like to, to be out in the wilderness. So um, I haven't used this one yet. I'm sure I will eventually, but this is where you have a pressurized hookup. You do need to use a uh, 50 PSI regulator on that, which um, uh, La Mesa RV actually gave us a, a little kit that comes with that, so that was nice. And then moving on down here is where you have your propane fill and then the switch to turn it on and off. So that's how you control uh, both of your um, combination hot water heater and the furnace, as well as uh, if we come around over on this side, the propane actually comes with an external hookup as well. Um, so if you wanted to bring a, a propane barbecue unit or um, a little outdoor gas fire pit, you can hook it up into that propane right there. Um, let's go back over to the other side. So right here, you've got your cassette toilet. So this is basically a 4.5 gallon cassette toilet. So when we use the restroom inside the van, uh, everything dumps out into this cassette toilet and you can just pull it out. And it's got this little hose here, so you unscrew the cap and you can uh, dump it into like porta potties or uh, any other dump station. You don't have to hook it up to a sewage pump that sucks it out. You just dump it out yourself. Um, I was a little nervous about this when we first got the van, but it's actually very easy to dump out. Uh, Non-messy isn't a big issue at all. Um, so that just clicks back in. When it clicks back in, there's a little cover plate that gets stuck in the actual holder up there. Um, and then that way, when you're using the functionality of the toilet, uh, that cover will slide back and forth. So um, a really nice self-contained unit, not messy at all, works really good. So just click that back in, lock it. So here we have a vent for the furnace that's just uh, to expel um, hot air and uh, I, I believe just gas from the furnace. Um, this is a additional solar hookup, which is pretty cool. This van is equipped with a lithium ion battery package as well as solar. So it's got a 150 uh, watt solar panel up top, a 3000 watt uh, inverter on the inside as well as a 400 uh, amp hour lithium ion battery. Um, so you, you don't have to have a generator with this particular van. Um, some of them come with a generator, some don't. That's a, a upgraded package that you can get. Uh, we wanted to be able to go out, um, kind of boondock it and be able to have plenty of power. So our lithium ion battery package will uh, run the AC unit for about four to five hours. Um, so it's pretty good. And when you drive, it's actually got two separate alternators. Uh, one of the alternators will charge the house battery when you're driving, and it seems to charge up very fast. So you don't typically have to worry about power with this van, which is super cool. Um, right here, you've got a cable TV hookup. We probably won't use that at all because when we're camping, we don't really care too much about watching TV. So here's your main hookup for uh, your electricity to charge the van itself, as well as supply it with power when you're at an RV park. 
uh, or anywhere that has hookups. So you can charge this at home as well as when you're at a hookup facility. So that's pretty cool. The Thor Tranquility is equipped with a, a big awning with an LED light. Um, everything is actually able to be controlled as far as the uh, lighting and awning functionality from a phone app, uh, which is from the BMP Pro panel. Um, so you can just click extend from your phone and you hold it down and then you can let it go and it'll just extend all the way by itself. While that's going on, I can show you, I can control the awning light from my phone as well. So turn it on, turn it off, pretty cool. Once this is fully extended out, you'll see it'll kind of get saggy for a second and then it'll retract back and tighten up. And then once it's all the way out, you just push these little feet in and then they extend all the way down. And there's a little section in the bottom here where you can make it flat and stake those down. You pull this little lever all the way up when you want to lock it in place. And then kind of same thing when you go to put them back. You just fold that little lever out like that, push it in, and then you can retract it. Just go back to the awning, which is called motors, swipe to unlock, and press retract. You wanna hold it for a second on your phone, and then you can let go once it's started going. And this is a really great functionality of this van because basically you can pull up to a campsite, pull out the awning, set up your camp chairs, uh, table if you want to, and then you can be gone within 10 minutes. It's super easy to set this thing up. Um, it's all motorized by itself, so what a cool functionality they did with this Thor Tranquility 19L. I absolutely love the look and style of the Sprinter van. It just looks badass um, with the 4x4 capabilities. I love this blue-gray color. It's, it's probably one of the coolest color cars I've ever seen. Um, so the front of this, this Sprinter van is just really sweet looking. So the last thing I want to show you is these exterior plugs right here. Um, we've actually used these plugs to uh, plug in our charger for our e-mountain bikes. Um, and it charges them up like just as fast as if you're plugging it in at your house. So uh, that is a pretty cool functionality to be able to just have a van that you can plug in your mountain bike um, have your e-bike ready to go, and uh, I'm excited to take this thing to Moab to check out that functionality as well. When we decided to buy a Sprinter van, we wanted to get something that was turnkey. You can build vans yourself, but they take a lot of hours, and we just didn't want to put that much time investment. So we decided to buy this one. It's already all built out, and I'm excited to show you what the inside looks like. Here we have a little outdoor kitchen area, which you can fold down and you can cook on. It has some plugs. It's really useful. Underneath of it is another extra storage space. You can put whatever you want in there. And then underneath is this mesh net where we're actually keeping our shoes for easy convenience in and out of the van. Something I really love about this van is the way it's set up to take in amazing views while you're cooking and having dinner. The kitchen has a two burner propane cooktop. And then you have the cover for the sink that lifts off. And then you can use the sink put this back for extra cutting area put that back down. and then we have a nor cold refrigerator which opens up it has a tiny little freezer on the top actually we have some popsicles in there for later and then we have the drawers right here we've got this really these ones are really deep quite big and then these two small ones, a lot of people think this is a faux drawer, but it's actually not, it's a pop-out. You can keep your sponge and a little soap for cleaning dishes. The van can actually transport four people safely with this bench seating area and it has official seat belts and everything. And then also we have this really cool lagoon table. 
It works really great for obviously having dinner, but you can also use it to work and it moves around a lot of different ways. So it takes advantage of the main seats that swivel around in the front. This is normally how we have the swivel seats set up for the van, unless we're gonna be staying somewhere for a longer period of time. And then we will actually swivel the driver's seat around. It just takes a little bit more effort than spinning the passenger seat around. So we'll show you how to do that in another clip. The TV is in an awkward position. Um, it does swivel out, but it's just really, really high up. And it makes it really weird for trying to watch it. Obviously, we come outside and do camping to spend most of our time outdoors, so we weren't too concerned about the TV. Um, but if that is something that you do care about, inside of the cupboard is an HDMI port. You can use it to connect a video game or a DVD console or anything um, that you want to be able to stream onto the TV when you're watching it. The BMP Pro panel controls most of the functions inside of the van, um, including the lights. So you can turn the lights on and off, all off, all on. And then you can actually go down to the individual light section and you can dim certain lights in different areas. Next, we have the controls for the AC unit, which you can turn on and off here and say how cool you'd like it to be. And then the next section, we have the awning controls that opens and closes the awning for the outside. Here, you can read how much water you have in your tank and how full your gray water is. You also control the water pump and it has some tank heaters underneath which keeps the water from freezing during the winter. You can see your battery level in this control panel as well and it also tells you how full your propane tank is. Finally, you can control all your fans and that includes opening the vents and then turning the fans on themselves. In the kitchen, you have a microwave that comes as part of the system. Honestly, I'm not a big fan of microwaves. I probably won't use it that much, um, but you do have that as something that you can use to cook with. In this cupboard, we have some more control systems. The master volt panel, which tells you how full your house battery is. And then it also tells you some other information. And then the inverter, which you can turn on and off from the system. The inverter needs to be on anytime you're using the microwave, the TV, the air conditioning unit, anything that's 110 volt. The Truma panel controls the furnace and the hot water system. So you just turn them on from right here when you want to use hot water in the sinks or shower. And then also if you're staying someplace in the winter or it's a bit cold out and you want to turn the furnace on. This door opens up the bathroom area. It's a little bit of a tight pull, but that's good because when you're driving, it doesn't swing out. So we just open this up. You can follow me into the loo. <laughs> so you can see it's a pretty tight squeeze. It is a small bathroom. You have a swivel faucet area that this actually pulls down to be a sink. I can't do it while I'm in here. <laughs> here are the controls for the shower and the shower head pulls out. This is the most functional way to shower in here is just to be sitting with the head and just holding it up here. And then you can pop it back into this area. Um, down here is the drain. And then it has a little cover for the toilet paper when you're taking a shower. If you open it up, obviously, there's your toilet paper. And then when you want to take a shower, you'll just close this. This is the water pump uh, button that filters to the toilet. So after you've gone to the restroom and you need to clean it out, you would push this. And then up here is the fan, a vent fan, especially for the restroom. You just push this up. It's not on a electric system. Um, but the fan does turn on with the electric system. You can also turn it on manually from inside of the bathroom, which is right here. You just push that button and then turn it off. And you also can control the lights directly from the restroom. <laughs> um, here we have a curtain. This curtain has magnets that are attached and you would just unmagnetize them. And you can just, just goodbye, slide it over. So before we head to the bed area, I wanted to show you this extra storage panel, which actually has quite a bit of extra room. And then we've seen some videos where people are thinking that this is just a faux drawer, but it actually functions as not only a step to get up into the bed because it is quite high. If you pull this open, it has quite a bit of extra storage, um, which can be really beneficial. So it's not totally a wasted space. The first thing that we have to talk about when we're talking about the bed area is the stock mattress that comes with the van is horrendous. 
honestly, I'm a really, really good sleeper and I slept my worst night's sleep ever in my entire life sleeping on the stock mattress. So the first upgrade that we made was to buy a plush bed natural latex mattress, which you can see under here. It is so much more comfortable. Uh, it's a really, really huge improvement. Now we sleep totally, totally fine. And I would just say that that's my number one tip is to make sure that you change the mattress in this thing. Back in the bedroom area, we have the cupboards. There's this large one right here. And then these two smaller doors that add quite a bit of supplemental storage. Both Brad and I don't really love the placement of this cabinet. The main thing is that it blocks the view when you have the double doors open, which I think is like the most important thing about van life is the views. Um, so we are considering removing this cupboard and that means we'll get rid of some of the storage, but that's a personal choice for us. If you care about having a bunch of storage and that's probably not something that you're gonna be interested in doing. And then underneath of the cabinets are these little reading lights that pop on. Um, so that's an extra little bit of light back here when you're just hanging out. And the windows have roll up shades that you just pull down and they, you gotta pull it down far enough to lock. So they lock for privacy. Both sides do that. And then you just pull them down again and they'll automatically roll back up. And then here are little tiny windows that you just pinch it together and it slides over. And then it has this nice little bug screen automatically clicked onto it. So you can open up the window at night for fresh air, but you don't get a bunch of bugs. And then it's easy to slot it back closed. When we're driving, we keep the privacy screens in the back of the bedroom and just makes it easy. So all of them are right here. We just stack them up. When we get someplace, then we'll throw them on the front. And then also there's these ones, which are for the back areas and the slider. So for reference, I'm 5'6 and Brad is 6'1. Brad, come on and hop in here and we're gonna show you what the size of the bed looks like with two people <laughs> actually laying in here. So I'm laying so. all the way out. My feet are just barely touching the window area. And um, I'm, I'm obviously, I'm 5'6", so I've got tons of room. Uh, the bed is... I, I sleep on my side, so we can sleep that way. It's super comfortable. I was slightly worried about it uh, when we first got it. One thing that you want to take note of is that um, you have a pillow that is uh, takes up not inches, too, not too hard, and and you can like squish it up because uh, I sleep with the shoulder underneath the pillow, um, and you just want to make sure that you can actually get your head up nice and close to the window. But they did do the pop outs on it, which gives you a little extra space for sleeping sideways. Actually, I forgot to mention that one of the reasons that we also don't like the cupboard is because one person is sleeping underneath of it. Yeah, does that ever So, you? Um, this doesn't really bother me. I normally have it folded like that because it's got a little thing. So. Just a bit claustrophobic. But it's a bit tight and I don't really mind this it. This has got to go. Yeah. I don't totally mind being underneath of it when I'm sleeping because there's actually, for me, it feels like space. But I still don't love it. So, it's... It's all about the views. We want those views. Yeah, and then also we were thinking that in this area you can lean up against it and you would be able to see out if this cupboard wasn't here, but because it is here, you cannot. So in this, <laughs> so in this section here we have some outlets as well as your master breaker. So this is how you actually turn on um, the electricity for the motorhome part of the van. You've got a fire extinguisher and then this is your solar panel controller. So this will tell you all the information about your power output and input for your solar panel. So now we're gonna check out the inside of the actual cabin of the Mercedes Sprinter van that they've set up. Um, it's kind of separate from what Thor did. It's the actual Mercedes Sprinter van part of the van. All the driving functionality, let's go take a look. All right, so we're inside of the actual cabin part of the Mercedes Sprinter van. Um, Mercedes have done a great job with this part of the van. It's super sleek. We've got this massive panel here which controls everything from navigation to your music. Um, if you press the home button here, you can swipe around, go through different apps. You can see some settings for the actual van itself. Um, everything is just really easy to use. Hook up to your phones. You can hook up multiple phones. So I have 
uh, my phone hooked up as well as Lindsay's phone. Up here, we've got pretty much your console to charge your phone with wireless charging. And you can also hook it up to a USB-C um, as well as uh, kind of other functionality to charge your phone. So that's a cool little spot there. Plenty of cup holders everywhere. I believe there's um, one on each side down there. We've got four here, so that's six, seven, eight, nine, ten cup holders. Um, so that's kind of unheard of. Um, and then as far as the steering wheel console, uh, you've got pretty much everything on the steering wheel that you need. Uh, so this one's come with the adaptive cruise control. Um, so when you're actually driving, you can set the cruise control to a certain speed and it'll break before a, a car um, you can set the distance you want it to break, so it can be anywhere from three cars apart to one car apart, uh, where it'll automatically slow down and speed up. So you don't even have to touch the brake pedal or the gas pedal when you're on cruise control. Um, it'll also keep the cruise control at the speed you want it, so when you're going downhill, if you have it set for 55, it'll keep the van going 55, uh, which is super nice for long road trips. Um, You've got your windshield wiper, blinker, uh, as well as lights on the left side. And then on the right side, this is where you actually um, put it into drive, reverse, park, neutral, all that good stuff there. Uh, you've got your uh, start and stop engine button right here. Um, and then down below here, you've got your 4x4 capability uh, button. So there's one to turn the four-wheel drive on and then you've got the other one for, um, for low. So if you're going up super steep hills, you turn that on and that will make sure you can go into a lower gear to get you up those really uh, gnarly four x four trails. Um, everything else as far as this is all just kind of light controls up here. Um, you can control the functionality of turning the dome lights and things like that on. You've got some storage up above. Um, you can actually, get a little shelf set up where it would actually cover this section up for extra storage. We might end up doing that. Um, but I feel like we've got kind of plenty of storage in this thing uh, already. These seats are super comfortable. This arm goes all the way up and then you can put it down and kind of set it wherever you want it. It's very nice and comfortable for long road trips. And then you've got the heated seats in the front here. And then, um, You've got all the controls for moving it back and forwards. Um, it's got controls to put the seat back forward and backward, uh, as well as memory controls. So the memory controls are really nice for when you're swiveling them around. We have them set on three different numbers. So when we're uh, getting ready to swivel the seat around, we have a number for that. And then we have a number also for when we want to kind of in a comfortable position for both driving as well as a comfortable position when we have them swiveled around facing towards the actual motor home part of the van. The last thing I wanna show you in here is how to swivel the driver's side seat around because it's a little bit tricky. Um, some people were mentioning in forums that it wasn't possible and it's totally possible. And it's actually one of the most comfortable seats to sit in, I, I like to call it the lounger. Um, but what we need to do first is take this lagoon table out. So how you do that is you just unswivel this little bolt system that's on the bottom here. It's like a rail system. So you unswivel that and then you pull this whole table up and off and you can just kind of set this to the side for now. Right there. And then what we need to do is anytime you swivel the seats around, you want to make sure that the driver and the passenger doors are open. Otherwise, the swivel mechanism uh, can actually hit the doors and damage them. So you open that up. And then there's little systems here, a little lever that you pull and you start spinning that around. So that just barely makes it you can put the seat back a little bit too if you want. The one thing that's a little tricky is that the actual controls for the seats are on the door. Um, 
so it does make it a little bit a little bit tricky but then um, what you can do is set the memory to where uh, once you have it in the setup that you want it swiveled around you can press a button so i just set mine for three and then that's a nice comfortable position for hanging out and it doesn't hit the steering wheel so now i've got this super nice lounger chair right here and then if i want to be able to work i can actually get the um the table and pop this back in the little slot here and work from the table i'm not going to do it right now because it's going to take a bit too long uh, but yeah this is one of the most comfortable setups right here and then Lindsay can sit in this one and put her feet on the little bench seat as well so plenty of space to just relax and uh just chill out in here. Thanks so much for joining us today on the tour of our 2022 Thor Tranquility 19L. I'm gonna go ahead and start her up and head over to our next destination. Let's go.